Hey everybody, it's Dan. Welcome to Weld Fever. On today's episode, we're going to do some flex core welding of some common joint types. So stick with me. Here we go. Okay, so the first joint we're going to tackle is a lap joint. And as you can see here, it's basically one piece is overlapped on the other. Now something I want to call your attention to is the fact that this is all nice, clean, shiny metal. This is what it looks like originally with a bunch of uh, mill scale on it. And I went ahead and took a grinding stone and just cleaned this all off. And the reason for that is that uh, the weld ends up coming out a lot better and a lot easier when you have clean shiny metal. It doesn't have to try to penetrate through that tough mill scale layer. So if you want a more successful weld, if you want to have an easier time of it, I strongly suggest that you take the mill scale off before you begin. The uh, material that we're using here is quarter of an inch thickness. Now we're going to be using the Longevity MIG Weld 140 to complete this flux core weld. And we're using this machine in honor of the fact that uh, our giveaway for the Stick Weld 140 is uh, underway as we speak. So anyhow, uh, on this particular machine using 035 wire, which is what I have in there, uh, the maximum thickness on a single pass is 3 16 of an inch. Well, as you realize, this, is, uh, this material here is about a 16 uh, too large. And ideally, when you lay in a weld here, or this type of a lap joint, you want it to join from the very top to the bottom. So, since we're a little bit shy, we're probably not going to get there. However, I'm going to see if I can manipulate the torch up and down a little bit to get that quarter inch fillet weld all the way across. I think that would be preferable to either having it come short or worst case scenario trying to do it in two passes. I think that would not be good either. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot. Okay before I get to welding I want to come in here and show the actual gun and what we're going to do. First of all notice that the stick out on here is somewhere between a half inch and three quarters of an inch. That's the uh, manufacturer recommendation for this particular type of, uh, of flux core. It's uh, definitely a lot longer than you would do for MIG welding and it seems to work better when you have it out this far. What I'm going to be doing is because this produces slag I have to drag it. So I cannot push it. I have to start from here and I have to drag in a backhand angle. Backward angle I should say. Uh, I'm going to aim primarily for where the two pieces join right in the corner there. And because I'm going to have to try to swing this up a little higher, I'm probably going to do like a circular motion or an up and down and watching my puddle until my puddle just nips the top and then come down so that hopefully when all is said and done I'll have a nice 45 degree angle fillet weld from one side to the other. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tack it on both ends. So let's go ahead and get that done. We're going to begin with uh, tacking this up, as I just mentioned. Very simple procedure. Just uh, get it right in the corner there and give it a little shot. Enough to where it uh, basically fuses a little bit, enough to hold it in place, but not too much. We don't have to get excessive with a tack weld. Notice I purposely left this part of it in here. I'm cleaning off the tack welds with the grinding wheel. Of course, you could use a chipping hammer or a regular hand brush or whatever. But I wanted to point out that when you have something that produces slag, you must clean your tacks or previous welds before you actually start welding over it. You do not want to trap slag in between there. Very important point. Okay, so now I am beginning uh, the weld, and like I mentioned earlier, you can see I'm definitely going uh, up and down here, up and down. I'm watching the puddle as carefully as I possibly can. Um, Admittedly, if I could, I would have a little bit more amperage into this, but we are using a 140 machine, so uh, we are limited by the amount of amps that we can put into this just based on uh, the power available. At this point in the process, I had to stop because my wire got stuck in the machine. I had to go in there and adjust it uh, because everything was kind of, uh, you know, tied up in there. 
And you're going to notice that the termination of the weld, when we show it, uh, there's a couple of voids at the bottom. Looks like cold lap, like there wasn't enough penetration, or I should say fusion at the bottom there. But what it was is that the wire was binding up just prior to it completely sticking. And uh, as a result, there was some voids because it just wasn't feeding properly. Anyway, I cleaned it all up prior to restarting. I started up ahead of the weld and came back into the uh, previous termination to try to tie it in well. There you can see the voids that were left as a result of that wire binding up on me. Again, it looks like it might have been uh, some kind of cold lap or some kind of a you know problem with uh, heat, but no, not in this case. Hey, it happens from time to time. It's just kind of the breaks, and you got to deal with it. Okay, so now for the next one, we're going to do a T joint. A T joint is a very common joint. Uh, it's used all the time in welding. There's really no trick to it. The only thing you have to understand is that uh, when you do this weld, both sides of the weld have to be uh, equal distance. So in other words, here at the very center, from here to here, and from here to up here. What? All right, this is what I was basically trying to explain, although I don't know what got into me. So bottom line is where the weld meets the base material is the toe. And the root is the center portion where the two pieces of material meet from root to toe equals a leg. I hope that explains it. This particular piece is a quarter of an inch. So our goal is to try to get it as close to a quarter of an inch as possible. So that means the distance from the corner or the inside edge here, inside corner, to down here at the bottom should be a quarter of an inch. And also, likewise, the distance between the uh, where the two uh, edges meet up to the top should also be a quarter of an inch thus making a nice fillet weld that's in an exact 45 degree angle from top to bottom like so. Uh, the way to achieve this is to make sure that you hit both sides equally in this case I'm going to probably do a side to side up, to, up and down motion as I go across I want to make sure that I take my time and that I angle in here 45 degrees into it and also about a 10 to 15 degree angle back. Now I'm going to be a little bit steeper than that because I'm trying to keep this gun out of the way so that you folks at home can see this. Otherwise, if I keep the angle like this, you won't see anything. So my angle is much steeper for the purpose of filming this. But keep in mind your angle should be about, here's 90, about 10 to 15 degrees back like so. Okay? So let's go ahead and uh, get this welded. We'll go ahead and begin here by uh, starting up on the uh, right edge. And we're going to go ahead and just go for it. You notice uh, I do have some tacks on this that I applied before filming. Uh, and they're actually on the sides of the piece, but uh, I just didn't choose to show that this time around. Anyhow, like before, we're going to go up and down in an up and down motion. And uh, as I looked at this, uh, I noticed that I was going a little bit slower than I did for the lap joint, which actually was good. Uh, the lap joint, I think I rushed a little bit. If you don't have the amperage to give you the punch, you do need to slow down a little bit uh, to try to get a little more heat into the piece. Uh, however, uh, not so much that you have excessive buildup of weld material. So, again, as, as always, it's a delicate dance between too much and too little. But uh, after a little bit of doing this, a little experience, and you'll figure it out. Anyhow, uh, there we go. We are cleaning off the weld. The slag has come off very easily, which is always a good sign. And upon cleaning this guy up a little further, you notice we have a nice, bright, shiny weld with a decent ripple pattern. And it appears, once we see it here, that everything looks pretty good. Uh, good fusion all the way across and uh, pretty even weld. And just like that, we're finished with another episode. Thanks so much for joining me on this one. Don't forget uh, our contest, our giveaway is underway. Visit www.wellfever.com backslash giveaway to enter. And make sure to catch us every Wednesday on Wealth Fever Wednesday. Uh, also catch us on Twitter and Instagram. Bye-bye.